Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse number six, and we're going to read it together, the King James Version. Let's read it together. Ready? Read. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Let your requests be made known to who? God. Let your requests be made known to who? God. You thought it said your sister. <laughs> You thought it said your brother. You thought it said your counselor. But he said, let your requests be made known unto God. Amen. Amen. This is a powerful scripture because in it we find our way of escape. We see the necessary instructions to rid ourselves from a life of anxiety, a life of worry, a life of stress. Amen. Amen. Now, although the word worry itself is never used in the King James Version of the Bible, there is a derivative of the word worry. It's the word care. And that word is found in 19 places within the Word of God. It's word like, words like take care, be careful, care itself, and have care. But these words, and by these words, it becomes clear what God expects us to do with worry when it manifests itself in our life. He said, don't care. Don't worry. He said, be careful for nothing. Let this be your position. Be careful for nothing. He's not saying, uh, don't watch where you step. He's saying, be worryful or anxious for nothing. All right? But instead of worrying, instead of caring, what did he tell you to do? Did y'all forget that fast? He said, let your requests be made known unto God in everything by prayer and supplication. And there's a difference. If there wasn't a difference between prayer and supplication, he wouldn't have said it. There is a difference, he said, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. That's three ways that you're supposed to do this. Pray, supplicate, and give thanks. Amen. And in those three things, make your requests known to God. Tell him about what it is that you're dealing with. What a supplication is, it's an humble entreaty. It's something that you present before God in a humble way. Amen. I'm talking about a mind shift. This takes a mind shift when you've got all this going on around you with your eyes and you can see that things could turn out for the worse. Yet God is saying, even though it looks bad, even though you don't have a good feeling about this, trust me in the midst of this. Amen. Don't take care. Say, I don't care. I don't care. Pray, supplicate, thank me in the midst of what's going on in your life. And he promised that he will take care of you. Amen. Amen. That's faith. Looking at a situation, looking at the conditions, and instead of being moved by them, you pray about them. You know, to the world, that's insane. This airplane went down in Indonesia, and when the aircraft landed, there were three Singaporeans on the flight and then one Frenchman on the flight. Now, I don't know what the, the religion is in Indonesia, but I know that a lot of, I know a lot of Singaporeans who know God. And so there's three, because I'm always looking, well, where's God in this, you know? Somewhere, somebody was praying. The aircraft uh, missed the runway, and instead of getting to the run runway, it landed in water, and the fuselage just split in half, and everybody got off. In the water, glory to God. What is that? So if the plane comes down, what happens? God creates a way of escape for you. Hallelujah. This is the way of the kingdom of God. It's trusting God in spite of what it looks like. It's standing flat-footed saying, God's got me. After you pray about it, it's trusting that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. You cannot worry change. Yeah. 
It's not designed to make sense. It's designed to make faith glory to God. We have to deal with worry. We can't allow it to rest in our minds and in our hearts and do nothing about it. At the first sign of worry, you've got to be on the defense. By reading the rest of Philippians, the fourth chapter, that entire context, you can see the disposition that God wants you to have when worry comes into your life. God wants your life to be stress-free. Say stress-free. Stress Worry-free. Worry. He doesn't want your concern, or he doesn't want you to be concerned about your bills. How am I going to pay my bills? Don't worry about it. And that doesn't mean you don't go to work. <laughs> that doesn't mean that. Now, don't twist what I'm saying. Now, Pastor Melvin said, I don't have to go to work. No, I didn't say that. I'm saying that if what you're bringing in does not meet every need that you have, you pray and you give God thanks. And you do what Pastor Skip was saying up here at offering time, you watch him. Bless it, break it, distribute it, and then watch there be more than enough for your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, last week I asked who in the room, or week before last, who in the room had been homeless. And there was a few people that raised their hands. And that's a stress many of us in here don't know anything about it. But people who've experienced homelessness, I've talked to them, counseled with them. They live with a constant worry that they could go back to that place of homelessness. You find adults who were at one time children who never had enough to eat. And they could be in a house full of food, and if you go in the cabinets, they're, they're hoarding food. Why are you hoarding that food? Because I don't ever want to be in a place again where I'm without. What is that? The worry of their experience is driving them to operate in an irregular way. Jesus. This is the root cause. You know, I, I watch hoarding. Me and Kayla, sometimes we sit up and we just watch the movie. Have you ever seen that, those hoarding episodes? You know what that is? That's fear. That's worry. They at some time lost something or someone. And they're holding on to all of this stuff because they don't want to lose anything else. What is that? That's worry and manifestation. All that junk you got in your house, that's worry. You can't move. You can't walk. You can't live a healthy life. In some rooms, when they go into the people's house, there's feces all over the floor, dirty diapers all over the floor, rats eating out of the same plates that the people are eating out of. What is that? That worry has driven them to a place where it's not even healthy anymore. God wants our life to be stress-free. He doesn't want you living like this. Jesus said in Matthew, the sixth chapter, don't think about what you're going to eat. Don't think about where you're going to live. Don't think about what you're going to drink. I've got you. Isn't that what he said? He said, take no thought. Now that's powerful. He said, don't take the thought. Worry comes in stages of thinking. Worry comes in thought processes, and Jesus said, don't take it, which means the enemy is going to come. He's going to come delivering his packages of worry, stress, and anxiety. Don't sign the package. He said, don't take the thought. What do we do? Here comes worry, and we just, yeah, I'm going to take that. And then we sit down and we think about it. And then every time something happens that looks like it, we think deeper about it. Yes. And we keep thinking about it. Yes. And we keep thinking about it. Until at one point, then it begins to operate in our physical body. What are you doing? You're carrying the worry. And Jesus said, don't, don't take those thoughts. You know, for me to take something, that means somebody else is offering it to me. Do you know, Yvette, that means I didn't give that to myself? Do you know that that means that I'm not offering that to myself for someone else, to, to, for someone to tell me, don't take it, don't take it. That means that it's being offered to me from another source. And what he's saying to you, it doesn't matter what the source is. Don't take the worry.
Murray. Amen. Amen. I'm talking to the body of Christ. I'm talking to a group of people who said that they know God. He promised to take care of us. Amen. It's not that we're walking around disconnected from reality. No, we're connecting to a greater reality. And that's the fact that no matter what the circumstances around us may be, abundance or lack, I'm not going under. I'm not going to worry about it because I have it on good authority that God is going to take care of me. I know things may look bleak. My spouse, my kids, my boss might be acting up. It may look dark, but I will not allow myself to worry. Jesus asked a powerful question in Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse number 27. He said, which of you, by taking thought, by taking a thought, can add one cubic to your stature. If you take that thought, how much taller can you make yourself is what he was saying. The New Living Translation says like this, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? The answer is no. What we have to come to grips with is no matter how much we worry, we can't change a thing by worrying. Nothing changes because we worry. In fact, things have the potential to get worse because you picked up worry. At first, all I had to deal with was the worry. Now, I got to deal with the headache because I'm worried. Now, I've got to deal with what it's producing in my physical body because of the headache. Now, I've got to deal with the separation that it's bringing between me and someone else because of the worry. So it's not just the worry that I end up contending with, I end up dealing with the worry and the effects of the worry. And I open myself up to sickness and disease. I've worried myself to a place that I've gotten pain in the back of my neck. Headaches, nausea, Who knows what I'm talking about? I thought so. So what are we going to do if we don't worry? We're going to recognize that after all these years, it isn't our worry that brought the change. If worrying was going to bring the change, everyone and everything in everybody's life would be all right and we would get up like Brother Hagin used to say and go over into the millennium and go on and be with Jesus. If worrying was going to bring the change, all of us would have, have our problems in our life fixed. Amen? Amen? Did worry bring change? Absolutely not. It's not designed to bring change. It's designed to create a bigger problem. So we can't give way to worry. Write that down. I cannot give way to worry. If you're thinking about right now, if you're in this room and you're wondering how you're going to pay your bills, you're worrying. If you're in this room and you've got a child that's gotten uh, uh, rebellious and that's all you keep thinking about, you're in worry. If you've been received a report from the doctor and thank God you got healed today, but if that's all you can think about is what the doctor said, you're worrying. If your business is not producing like you want your business to produce and all you can think about is the fact that you don't have any clients, you're worried. If you're in a relationship with a male or a female and you're running behind them checking their iPad, checking their email, looking at their Facebook page, you're worried. <laughs> Worrying changes nothing, but prayer changes everything. Glory to God. 